All right, going on to chapter 13. This is a bit of a longer one again. And I'm almost halfway through. And a little worried if I'm going to be able to motivate myself or push myself to get these done by, by or on the 4th at least. Because it's officially the 3rd now. And uh, it's actually 1.22 a.m. I need to probably get some more sleep. But we'll see. Anyways, I've got plans today. i got to do yard work and visit my mom and do some things. I'm obviously not going to be uploading videos while I'm doing that. So I'm trying to get done as many as I can right now. Um, and, uh, you know, I might be busy on the 4th too. But right now, it's just time to push these out. So let's see. Barnabas and Saul sent off. Acts 13.1, now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger, Niger, I don't know, Lucius and of Cyrene and Manion, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. Anyways, a bunch of people there, whatever. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas, and Saul, for the work whereinto I have called them. They ministered, they, they fasted. The Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas, and Saul. So, Barnabas to work uh, for the Lord specifically. And when they had fasted and prayed, and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So, they go to Cyprus. It looks like Barnabas and Saul on Cyprus. And so, uh, and so I was thinking about the ministering to the Lord. It's not like the, the Lord needs work done for him, like, like he needs anything. But, it's like, you know, they were praying, they were fasting, they were doing the Lord's work, basically. Okay, so Bar Barnabas and Saul on Cyprus. Acts 13.4, So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they also, and they had also John to their minister. <clears throat> and when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Barjesus, which was with the deputy of the county, our country, Sergius Pal Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elymas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation. So Elymas is the Bar-Jesus guy. He withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. Now, is this the first time that they refer to Saul as Paul? I'm thinking so, from what I've read in the book of Acts. So Acts 13.9, the first time that he's referred to as Paul. Acts 13.10, And said, O fool of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not see to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. So this bar Jesus guy was cursed, in a sense, and became blind because of his unrighteousness, because of his trying to prevent um, God's kingdom from its duty. And Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. So another admonition not to oppose those who are doing God's work. Paul and Barnabas at Antioch and Pisidia. Now, when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, they came to Perga and, and Pamphylia, 
And John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch and in Pisidia, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. He stood up, and beckoning with his hand, said, Men of Israel, and ye that fear God, give audience. And so they say they are going back to to the Jews. They, I mean, they're going in the synagogue, so, you know, they were preaching to the Jews and stuff, and then they went to the Gentiles, but it seems like they're also still going back to the Jews, because they're in the synagogues. Then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand, said, Men of Israel, and ye that fear God, give audience. The God of this people of Israel chose their fathers and exalted the people they when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt, and with an high arm brought ye them out of it. And about the time of forty years suffered he their manners in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he divided their land to them by lot. And after that he gave unto them judges about the space of four hundred and fifty years until Samuel the prophet. And afterward they desired a king, and God gave them Saul, the son of Sis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of forty years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. When John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel, and as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom thank ye that I am? I am not he, but behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. Oh, my nose, sinuses. <laughs> Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth God, to you is the word of this salvation sent. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they, Pilate, that he should be slain. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and had laid him in a sepulcher. But God raised him from the dead. And he was seen many days of them which came up with him, of them with Galilee to Jerusalem, who are witnesses unto the people, who are his witnesses unto the people. And we declare unto you glad tidings, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God hath fulfilled the same unto us their children, and that he hath raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption, he said on, on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Wherefore he hath also in another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom God raised again saw no corruption. Okay, yeah, so that, that pretty much explains that verse from the Psalms, that, uh, you know, the, the body of David, you know, laid in, in, the, in the grave, and the body of raised, Jesus was raised again, or it, it was gone. So, be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Beware therefore, lest that come upon you, which is spoken in the prophets. Behold, ye despisers, and wonder, and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God.
But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were, which, uh, those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it, seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Now, there's, you know, a lot of Calvinist beliefs about that verse, but I won't go into that now. The, um, so it's interesting that Paul goes all the way back it's kind of like the sermons with Peter and even with Stephen where, you know, he goes all the way back kind of to the times of Abraham or to Moses. He talks about, you know, David and um, how God's promise, all of this was fulfilled in Jesus. And he talks about the resurrection and um, Anyway, so so a lot a lot of them uh, believed, but then there were some that opposed him. Acts thirteen forty nine, and the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coasts. But they shook off the dust of their unto Iconium, and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. So, again, I say it a lot, but there is a lot there that I could go into individually in each verse, but uh, for kind of a try and restraint, I'm just going to have to move on. A lot of it's kind of self-explanatory, too. You know, he went and he preached the gospel to these Jews in the synagogues. And, you know, as I said, as we've seen over and over again, you know, a lot, many were saved, and, and there were a lot that opposed them as well. And so they were kicked out of the city. So, um, you know, this might be the first kind of persecution of Paul. I don't remember. I don't think he was... Well, he was kicked out of the... Uh, like they had to sneak him out of the city. He was... He, yeah, he was kicked out already. Right after his conversion, he was already kicked out of another city. He had to sneak out or whatever. And then uh, kicked out again. So we've seen Peter was already arrested and stuff. It doesn't seem like... I don't think Paul's been arrested yet. But, good. Um, and then, you know, there was that Bar-Jesus guy, too, who, who, they, uh, who was blinded because he was trying to prevent them or he was, uh, just, you know, this guy not to believe, so... All right, guys, thank you for watching, and I'm going to continue on to Acts chapter 14, halfway through the book of Acts. Still a long ways to go, so God bless.